Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 606. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Alan Haley. Today is Monday, June 22nd, 2020. All right, welcome to another program. I've brought back Alan Haley because we have legal news. Boy, we have legal news. Before we get too far into that, let's talk about your responsibility as a viewer. I need you to like this episode to help the Facebook and YouTube algorithms promote us. I need you to share this program. You're going to want to, especially if you live in the Diocese of Texas and South Carolina, any diocese, you should, you should share this. <laughs> Or if you want, <laughs> if you have a, a special interest in uh, Supreme Court rulings, we'll be talking about that as well. Okay, opposite me is Alan Haley, and there's so many new people to the show. I want to be sure you know what you're about to watch, who Alan Haley is, and what we're you know what what, we, what we're going to sit down and talk about. Alan Haley is a lawyer uh, who specializes in I would say family law. No. Uh, well, church law, property law. Well, church, family, property. You're based out in Northern California, and you have been involved in the legal struggles with the Episcopal Church for an easy dozen years. Yes. Okay. Um, people who are new to the prog program probably do not know that when there was a split in the Episcopal Church and the ACNA, and even before that, uh, diocese wanted to split and churches wanted to leave the Episcopal Church, the Episcopal Church had a canon called the Dennis Canon. And the Dennis Canon says, in all intents and purposes, you own your property until you say you want to leave. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you want to leave, we own your property. Right. We get it by a uh, virtue of a trust we've imposed on you without your knowledge or consent. Right. This is this is a canon within within the Episcopal Church. There's another canon within the Episcopal Church says we can't go to court and take these <laughs> disputes under these canons. Okay. Canons are the bylaws of the church, by the way, for people who don't know what a canon is. It's just like, quite like a corporate bylaw. Okay. Anyway, the uh, yeah, right. They say we can't take disputes under our constitution canons into the civil courts. Well, that that's why I have Alan Haley on the program, so we can explain to you when a decision has been made, and this is this these are this has been happening for a dozen years so far. And so we have the South Carolina decision we're talking about, the Texas decision, and there's more news out of the U.S. Supreme Court. That's what we're right. going to talk about today. Right. And I've been in the Supreme Court. I've been there arguing a case. You from, won. Oh, I know that one, too. Yeah, right. We won that. <laughs> <laughs> Silent. <laughs> we don't make up the news. We report the news. And right. you know, when, when there's no news to report or bad news, uh, uh, sometimes you do, we just stay silent. And <laughs> I remember uh, months ago, almost last uh, summer now, we got this original ruling out of uh, South Carolina um, where they said the properties go to the Episcopal Church. Right. And the trademark and seal, that, that goes to the Episcopal Church too. And before that, we had a Supreme Court ruling where we had... There wasn't a majority opinion. There were kind of five opinions from five judges uh, that said numerous things. And uh, I remember that the legal team from uh, the Anglican Diocese of South Carolina trying to go through and, uh, what does this say? There's five different opinions here. Nobody right. says anything coherent. It was assigned to Judge Dixon, and Judge Dixon sat down and obviously understood the problem that, uh, yes, there's five opinions, we want to go with whatever majority there is here, right. but we also want to hold uh, together with neutral principles, that, which was decided at the uh, state Supreme Court level before, right. and uh, the law here in um, South, South Carolina, Carolina right. without allowing carpetbaggers to have their way. So, <laughs> all right, that, so. that's, a, that's actually key. The, the <laughs> earlier decision of All Saints Waccamaw uh -huh. uh, in 2009 was controlling, and uh, there were two justices on the court, Placones, who was retiring, and, and uh, Justice Hearn, who was the Episcopalian activist and shouldn't have been there. But they declared themselves the majority in overruling Waccamaw. Well, two out of five doesn't make it. Yeah. And so 
what they what they said about um, deference to the Episcopal Church was just a minority view, and none of the other three justices signed on to that. So that's where a lot of people got misled because they put, they declared in their two opinions what the outcome should be based on their rule of deference, and that was not uh, governing governing South Carolina law. So just Judge Dixon properly ignored what they said. Now that's the difficulty in going to court. Right. When you know, when Paul the Apostle Paul warned us, just just don't, mm -hmm. don't do it. Don't go to court. Don't go anywhere. Neither is to to take care of your um, your judicial issues because it's never you fair, it right, of, or understandable. You put, you put it in front of civil people; they don't understand your religion, right? No, and uh, that's happened time and time again. You were. A, a participating lawyer in legal cases in California. Right. You had a different result. What happened it, there? Well, California is one of you know we we our score with dioceses versus Episcopal churches now stands at uh, three out of five have been victorious for the withdrawing diocese in California, and unfortunately Pittsburgh are the two that lost their battles in the in the local courts there because those courts decided to defer to the Episcopal Church under the archaic doctrine of the 19th century. And so it's uh, it's too bad, but, uh, you know, we, we reference to St. Paul and, and uh, how he warned Christians to keep their disputes out of the civil courts. Uh, it's funny because the Episcopal Church, we've been in litigation with them now for, what, 10, 15 years? And <laughs> they have a canon saying, uh, no clergyman is supposed to take any dispute under this canon into the civil courts. <laughs> so. That shows you how well they follow their own canons. Well, now the same thing happened in Texas almost uh, two months ago where Texas uh, Supreme Court said neutral principles apply here. Right. You can't have an interest in these churches. And that was a unanimous decision by the Supreme Court this time, overturning the judgment of the Court of Appeal to the contrary and reaffirming the decision of the trial court. And basically holding that the Dennis Canon, as in South Carolina, is a dead letter in Texas because you cannot create a trust by yourself on property that which you don't own. Uh, no matter how much you want to say, well, I'm your superior, you owe me allegiance and all this kind of thing. You still, under neutral principles of law, unless you're getting special treatment, uh, which the, the church is not entitled to under the First Amendment, um, then you are not entitled to say, hey, all property in the, your state is in trust for me. So Texas held that, and South Carolina held that, and Illinois held that in the Diocese of Quincy. And that's the, those are the three losses. Of the, uh, and you know, it's, it's something because it took a while, but uh, for a while the magic dust that the Episcopal Church used to scatter over ju judges' eyes, say, hey, we're hierarchical, <laughs> we're you know, the de denomination around here. Uh, that's now worn off, and uh, as I say, their arguments are the more time goes by, the more they're losing on this argument. Now, if I were the Episcopal Church of five years ago and I had this ruling, I would say, we're going to the Supreme Court. Right. We're going to take this, we're going to go right up and march it to the steps of the Supreme Court and put this before them. And we demand that they finally act on church property uh, issues. There needs to, this, this was somebody of V. Wolf was right. the, the last time they, they had a... Uh, a good um, Jones decision. v. Wolf, nineteen seventy nine. Okay, long, long, long time ago. Nineteen seventy nine. Okay, right? Over that's forty back, years ago. That's back to disco. That's how long ago <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we're talking. So um, it's time for the U.S. Supreme Court to revisit it because neutral principles aren't being uh, fairly applied around our nation. Well, you know, it's it's ironic. Yeah, and you're right. Probably in Texas and now. Well, in South Carolina, they're first going to have to go up to the South Carolina Supreme Court before they can go back up to the U.S. But it's ironic because uh, when they had won, supposedly, quote unquote, with uh, the, the scattered decision of the five justices in South Carolina, uh, the Bishop Lawrence and his group of parishes took uh, tried to get the Supreme Court, to, U.S. Supreme Court, to look at the case. And you know what the Episcopal Church filed in opposition? They said, oh, that decision of the South Carolina Supreme Court, it's not worth review. It's five scattered opinions. You can't make hide nor hair of it. And then, <laughs> as Judge Dixon was happy to quote that, when they came back and argued him, oh, this is clear. They've told us that we get, our, we get all the properties. 
So they were they were blowing hot and cold depending on whom they were talking to, and he rightly called them on that. Uh, if we could only have a Judge Dixon in e each of our state courts. Um, okay. l l let's move on to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court mm -hmm. um, handles cases all the time, uh, which deals with legislation and whether or not it's constitutional. Correct. Or things that happen in our in our courts and whether or not it protects and is guard, guarded by and guaranteed by the Constitution. Constitutional. Right. And the most recent decision was whether or not uh, people in the LGBTQ community, I'm sorry if I don't have the whole acronym, it's too long for my, my small brain to, to handle, um, have employment rights where they cannot be fired for their sexuality. Under Title is, Seven of the Civil Rights Act, correct. Under Title Seven of the C Civil Rights Act, you and I don't want employers to be able to fire people randomly for things like this as well. Right. But there's no religious exemption for a pre, and this happened in Watertown, mm -hmm. uh, I, where I used to go to church uh, eight years ago. The priest stood up and said. Um, in a few months, I'm going to go in and have surgery and, and change my gender to, Ooh. yeah, he's right in front and sent a letter to everybody. I, I'm no longer Paul. I'm going to be identified as Paula. Uh, hopefully I'm not giving away the real name. I don't want it, you guys to Google it. But no. um, Paul, I, I'm going to be called Paula. Now, the next day, he was summarily fired by the uh, leaders of the church. Hmm. If there's no religious exemption, he can't be fired uh, under the same circumstance, correct? No, in fact, uh, the, the, you're talking about the recent ruling in the case of Bostock, which just yeah. last week in the Supreme Court, and that was a six to three decision with Judge Gorsuch, Justice Gorsuch, writing the major, majority opinion, surprisingly enough. And the, he laid down such a broad rule, it's gonna be very hard to apply without lots and lots of further litigation. They read the word, basically, they read the word sex in the 1964 Civil Rights Act to embrace sexual orientation and gender identity. And of course, those terms were not even in use back in uh, 1964. And it certainly wasn't on the minds of the Congress that passed that act that this is what it should extend to. But now the Supreme Court, just as it did in Obergefell, changing the definitions of common definitions of words that we've used for years uh, has held that um, they changed marriage in Obergefell and now they've changed sex in Bostock. Uh, hold that it embraces the concepts of that and also that uh, you can violate now Title Seven and that provision by whether you know the sex of the person you're discriminating against or not, according to Justice Gorsuch. There's a, an amazing passage in that opinion. It would say if a, they say a church, the Catholic Church, for example, announces we will not accept gay people for seminary uh, and to become priests in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. under the language that uh, Gorsuch has laid down now, they could be sued under Title VII for that because he says uh, they don't need to know whether it's men or women applying, and of course only men are supposed to apply to the Catholic Church. Maybe I should use a different example. But well, he, no, uh, but yeah. a, a priest. Yeah, a if a, a, they can no longer deny female um, gendered people a right to become a priest. This, right. this or complete... once they are a priest, to be change their sex. Right. And so uh, that could happen, I suppose, in the Catholic Church and generate a lawsuit too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is the kind of broad language that he just smacked down on top of everyone with no preparation and no ability to deal with it. And it's going to be left to the lower courts over the next 10, 15, 20, 25 years, maybe 40 years, like in church property law cases and Jones v. Wolf. Um, it's going to take that long to sort all this mess out and to uh, see the First Amendment rights of the church, of course, trump anything that Congress says uh, and in the Civil Rights Act. And also the First Amendment rights of the church are uh, reinforced by the uh, Defense, of Merit, or Defense of Religion Act that Congress passed in 1993. So they're going to have to but that's not binding in every state, and uh, it's only so. It's going to it's going to take, as I say, total um, uh, years and years of mishmash and litigation around in the in the courts. Lots of lawyers are going to get rich. Lots of employers are going to go broke, uh, and trying to get the law sorted out in this. And it was for, 
you know, no need to do anything like that to change the definitions on us. But we've got this atmosphere now at the U.S. Supreme Court that, uh, yeah. oh, the Congress and the states are moving too slowly to protect the rights of all these minorities. So we've got to simply re read it into it and do the legislation for them. I saw one <laughs> senator in the, in the U.S. Senate who said, invited Justice Gorsuch to step down and run for the legislature if he wanted to continue to do what he's but doing. <laughs> isn't that the point, though? We want this handled in legislation we don't want exactly. this handled at the courts this is for they're, people and their elected representatives yeah, mm -hmm. to make the decisions on these these are family matters family law matters and personal matters and gender sex matters uh, you don't oh, want nine i i, I, I don't mind this actually being state matters i don't mind if yeah. if georgia has a different representation of this than i hate to use this but Washington <laughs> or Oregon or other sure, uh, sure. craziest lefty places, uh, autonomous zones around our. <laughs> and we still want to talk about, you know, <laughs> there's already autonomous zones. It's called uh, Washington, but, you know. <laughs> we, we saw more of this um, judicial usurpation of the powers of Congress in the other decision this weekend on DACA and DAPA, the um, deferred for parents and deferred for children, deferred action on deporting them. Uh, and you know, again, the what the Obama administration had done was simply out of whole cloth make up this program for deferred action. And of course, the illegal part of it was they started making them eligible for benefits and uh, appropriating money without an appropriate legislation behind it. So that was clearly illegal and unconstitutional. And the Trump uh, administration, when it came into office, said, "No, we're going to repeal that part." But they repealed the whole program by executive order, saying it was all illegal from the get-go. And the Supreme Court nitpicked, uh, again, with Justice Roberts uh, writing opinion this time, nitpicked their findings and said, well, yeah, maybe the payments to them are illegal, but you, the action to defer uh, deporting them, that's equitable. That's, that's within the executive's power. And you can't arbitrarily cease that power just because you're a new executive without going through the uh, procedures in the Administrative Procedure Act and, and considering the harm you're going to do to people's expectations and everything like that. I mean, where does the court get off telling the executive how he's supposed to carry out his duties? Again, it's the overreach by the judicial branch and they're interfering in the legislative and now the executive branch. And this is a worrying trend if this is gonna be typical of these decisions. Well, I, I'm not too worried because Trump has only lost once or twice at the Supreme Court level, where Obama lost 12 times <laughs> okay. uh, in eight years. So, yeah. uh, I mean, o Obama had done some really horrible legal strategies. Right. He in regularly the executive. because he, he, he said, I can do it without Congress saying. Yeah, he, he was almost a monarch. And uh, people look back, oh, I just, I loved Obama's years. Supreme yeah, Court did it. Supreme Court's like, they're, they're pulling their hair out. He did what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. And this DACA decision, as Trump himself pointed out, is really not a loss for them. Yeah. Trump wants yeah. to take care of these people. He just wants to do it right, and he wants Congress yeah. to do its part, which yeah. is, again, you know, Congress keeps punting their thing. As long as the court is going to decide things for Congress, Congress is perfectly happy to just let them get all the heat. Yeah. Well, the Supreme Court is reacting to an inactive yeah. legislature. Yeah. You know, and it, that's... That's it. What are we paying these people for? And they, they uh, can't even pass a budget. Uh, they just go continuing spending the same amount of money we got last year, plus a few more bucks for my friend here. And then we'll just go on <laughs> spending money, spending money. I don't know. I want to thank you, Alan, for your time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, there'll be more legal news coming up soon uh, because there's going well, to be an June. abortion ruling. Yeah, and June, June is when all the difficult decisions are announced in the Supreme Court. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll be taking my <laughs> anxiety medicine and <laughs> we'll sit down and we'll talk about what, what just happened. Okay. Uh, I do look forward to that. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Alan Haley. You've been watching episode 606 of Anglican Unscripted. <laughs>